We'll open this meeting of the Sheffield Select Board. We'll thank CTSB for their coverage of our little town meetings here. We sure appreciate it. Um, I'd like to open with a moment of silence for Air Force Staff Sergeant Jacob Gallagher. Moving on to the first item on our agenda is approval of meeting minutes. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes from November 20th, two sets, November 29th, December 5th, and December 13th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Discussion action regarding MIIA's evaluation of town buildings. So this is Maya, our insurance company, and they have sent someone around to evaluate our town building. So in front of you, you will see what they had for a current value and then what they have for an updated value. They also require that we insure the building for 100% replacement costs. So it's going to increase our premium by about $3,000. I would make a motion. We accept their recommendation and uh, follow their advice. I second that. I agree also. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's pricey, but we don't want to be without it. Right? No. Discussion, possible action, letter regarding transportation of materials rest of river. a chance to read this letter and, and this is really a um, five town letter from Great Barrington, Lee, Lennox, Sheffield and Stockbridge who uh, have worked together for years on the whole issue of the PCB cleanup for the rest of river and this really is just expressing um, kind of the universal um, disappointment at the transportation and disposal plan that GE put together and then submitted to EPA, which EPA then makes available for public comment. And in that plan, GE really focused almost exclusively on truck traffic to remove the materials to the upland disposal facility and then to the freeways to be taken, uh, the, the more contaminated materials. Um, out of state to um, particular spots that are designed to hold them. So um, I think this letter is extremely appropriate. I think before the comment period is over, there will be more w work done on this um, and probably more letters uh, from the five towns. But I would make a motion that we um, authorize um, our chair to assign this river, this, excuse me, this letter for the Sheffield Select Board. I would second that. I, I thought it was a, a very well written um, letter, and I think it's important that we remain a united front with the five towns. And it doesn't directly impact us, but it does impact those towns that the dredging will be occurring in. And if you can lower the, the amount of just comfort that the towns will have to deal with, I think it's a great idea. So I'm in favor of signing this also. All those in favor? Aye. So I will find out how they're gonna go about the signing of it, but I have one more request that goes along with this. West okay. Stockbridge has asked that boards um, allow them to be in the letter and to sign the letter as well, because they will be impacted by the travel. I have no problem with that as long as it doesn't hold this up. I mean, this letter is actually becoming dated in its comments given the EPA's meeting and the public comments on this to date. Um, I'm afraid if, we, if it goes too much longer, it's going to have to be rewritten because well, it's, it's getting out of date. I'm sure as long as the other four towns agree to have yeah, decided, I don't matter. have an issue. Yes. Right, because we're, I, I believe that at least three are voting on this this week, and I think there's one that's going to be a little bit later. I think so. as long as it gets out by the 1st of January, 
given the holidays. It goes much longer than that. <clears throat> okay, do you need a bow on the second part? Or? Yes, please. Okay. I would make a, recommend a motion that we allow uh, and encourage West Stockbridge to sign this letter also. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? I will let you know that I sent a letter to Dean Telfargiabo, who's been on this rest of river for I think his entire EPA career, asking him what is GE's right to sue on plans that the EPA makes comments on versus the original permit. I'm, I'm just not sure what, because GE in the, in the original agreement got the right to sue on a lot of stuff which was very abnormal. So I'm just trying to figure out, that's one question. And second question is, I've asked him whether comments that are made at like meetings like the town of Lee has been holding, whether those are going into the record or whether there has to be a, a formal submission. So I will let the, the board know as soon as I find that out. All right. Agenda. Appointment announcements for the Cultural Council and the Board of Registers. So we have two, I believe, for the three, three for the Cultural Council. I'm tongue tied tonight. And then one for the Board of Registers. Right. Would you like me to read them? Sure. Okay. So for the Board of Registrars, it is Ruby Littman. And I've talked with Phyllisy, and she would love to have Ms. Littman be on the Board of Registrars. And then for the Cultural Council, we have Sarah Kissel, Kaisel, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, David Sobel, and Mark St. Germain. May I ask how many can be on the Cultural Council? 15, I believe. Does that make sense? It's a state, you know, the state allows. Up to 15 I, members. It may even be 20, Renee, I'm not sure. It, it's a high It's number. a lot. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> and how many do we have at this point? Um, I can't answer that without looking. Lot. I'm going to take a guess that we have at least 10 now. I think we have 10. Okay. They fill this table. They do. I wish yeah, we could get people to be as interested in other <laughs> boards as they are the cultural yes. council. <laughs> okay. So that is the announcements we have for tonight. Uh, discussion, possible action regarding the Tri-Town Connector. Okay. So if it's all right, Ron, if I pick this up. Okay, so uh, our dear friend Tate Coleman, who put together the Tritown Connector, which is a micro transit on demand, micro transit, um, has been able to get some additional money, and that would be in this fiscal year. So um, he already has a small uh, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, 7.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. pickups at different points in town. And he has riders that are actually using that. So um, with this extra money that he has gotten, uh, it would pay for half and we would have to pay for half if we wanted to, um, prior to July 1, add uh, some more time frames to the times that people could be picked up in Sheffield and then taken to any one of these uh, stops uh, that are kind of toward the, the bottom of our page. They would add a 10.30 a.m. and a 12.30 p.m. Um, in addition to that, um, this service is available for anyone. Um, you can be any age uh, and I'm, I know they have um, disability accessible uh, vehicles, but I'm not sure if this service would include that. I, I, need, to, um, I need to find that out. Also, um, this is a flag stop route. It's really just down Route 7. So on the second page, there's like, you can flag the vehicle down on Route 7. Okay, so if it leaves at, at 8.30 uh, uh, from uh, um, the south end of town, if you're there at like 8.35 along the route, you can flag it, okay? Uh, and they will provide door-to-door -door service to locations that are within three quarters of a mile 
of the of the route um, with 24 hours notice. So um, he just wanted to um, bring this forward to you, and he couldn't be here tonight. So I told him that I would let you know about this. Um, he is hoping to receive a, a grant uh, that would allow him to come back uh, prior to the start of the new fiscal year and do a seven day a week service for Sheffield. He's been talking about this for about a year. So that would also include the weekends, okay, when Senior Center is not available for senior members. Our cost of, uh, for this would be for those two additional times. We're not paying already for the, the um, um, eight, 7.30 and 8 and 3.30. If we wanted to add a 10.30 and a 12.30, it would cost us for those two additionals $1,950, which is 50% of what's covered in the cost for uh, the funding. The funding pays half, we pay half. The cost of the service per rider is $2, and of course all rides between now and the first of the year are free. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, I don't know that you, if you have all the information you need to make a decision, you can tell me what you need and I can have it for our early January okay. meeting. Now this would be from, the 1900 is for just between January 1st and June 30th. Yes, for, it's for not six, a year, months, it's a six months, but term. it's for these additional two hours. Right. He's already yeah. given us uh, for the rest of the year this 7.30 and 3.30, because he picks somebody up and he comes this way anyway. Okay. So it's like, why not pick people up? Mm -hmm. And he has gotten requests for service. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this is a bad deal. I would be very interested in him keeping tabs on this for us. He so will. So that before the, um, the next fiscal, fiscal year begins, we have some actual analysis as to how yes. many Sheffield residents are taking mm -hmm. use of this. Um, I don't see it being so much a benefit for the Sheffield Senior Center people, but um, it's the people that don't qualify to, to drive to ride on the senior vans um, that that may benefit from this. Um, and, and also people that don't have cars. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah. So I would I would recommend that we that we I would make a motion that we go ahead and and support this with taking the 1950 out of the Berkshire School funds. It serves the entire community, and I see it as a, as a reasonable mm -hmm. use of the monies. Um, the only thing I would ask is that it would be nice to know how many Sheffield residents are taking advantage okay. and how many have requested for this additional uh, service, if any. Um, okay. But I would be in favor of this, so I'll second that. I will get those stats for you. We also um, need to get some signs made, and MassDOT is in favor of this because the stops are at the rest areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we could have one here in town. All right, they just want to know that we're, MassDOT just wants to know that this is going to be solid. Yeah. Okay, so I will get you that information, and then I will get him, um, with your permission, to make up something that can be put on our website that's understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. The next one is Renee's, the electric vehicle charger update. Okay. So we started this a little while ago, but I just wanted to kind of um, show you two proposals that have come in and this is a company that solicited the town and I thought why not let's go forward uh, and see what this comes about. What these, these two proposals are basically the same. They are for what they call a level three fast charger. So you can charge a car very quickly. Uh, 20 minutes and you can put 80% of the power on it. Um, they're universal chargers that work on um, every car, it's not proprietary. Um, what each of these quotes, one for the um, town parking lot and one for the library is, it is two charging units, 
each unit has two chargers. So it's a total of four chargers. It is a system that charges the customer for the electricity used. Now, what he did on each of these, he kind of laid out what those cost, and you can see that each of these uh, proposals, one for the library again and one here for uh, the, the town uh, parking lot, is about $425,000. The idea behind this is to go forward, a site where it would be, and then uh, give this to National Grid, and um, the vendor does that, and see what part of it National Grid is going to pick up. Um, supposedly, right now, um, they've put a little bit of a hold on the lower level, slower chargers, and it may happen on these. So he's pushing a little bit on this. But I do not necessarily like the language that's at the bottom. And so I need to talk a little bit more about this with him. Rhonda, I believe, may talk with our council about this. And while he solicited us, before we get together again in January, I'm going to talk to National Grid and see if this language is, is normal. Because what it basically says is that if this doesn't come about the way that we want it to, at like zero cost, and we have costs and do not go forward with it, then we are responsible for the time and money that they have put in to put this proposal together to come out and do the site visit work. And that to me is a liability that I'm not sure we, unless it is normal course, want to assume. <coughs> so I wanted to kind of bring you up to date so you have, I don't think these costs are abnormal. I would also like to know about the annual software license and the service and maintenance coverage. Okay. It's included in the bid for five years, but what yes. happens after five years? Okay, so I asked Because that's that. another, you know, yes. 60,000 or so between. Yes, <laughs> so I asked two. about that. And basically, um, right now, all of this um, um, annual service is covered by MassDOT because they want stats. They want to know what's happening with it, all right? He felt, and again, I need to talk with Mass um, uh, uh, DOT or with National Grid. It is felt that they will probably want to continue stats after the initial five years, but if not, then this 180 charge, and the maintenance doesn't need to be included. This is, um, if they want to make sure that these are available and work, while Mass DOT is funding it during this period. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a special type of maintenance, which you see the word optional. Yeah, items. I did okay. see that. They could be called on call. The annual software would be $180 times four, because this is for each one of the chargers. This tells you um, how much is being used, how much money is being recouped through users, paying for the electricity, this may turn out to be a possible money maker, all right, and other things, which I can get more detail yeah, on. I was going to say, it looks like we need some more work on this, but I, great job so far. Okay, so I'll be back to you hopefully um, in January, early January, and we'll go from there. Very good, thank you. Okay, discussion possible action regarding business licenses for business. You skipped Did I seven skip one again? Update on community preservation. Sorry. I'm going to pass on that. Okay. I've done a lot of work on it, but I'm not ready to present it to the board. Okay. I, I hope to be in January. Just a couple things have come up that have taken precedent. Okay. So then we'll move on to eight. Discussion possible action regarding business licenses for businesses with taxes owed. Rhonda, would you like to? So as we talked about at the working meeting last week, there were a handful of businesses who owe taxes, some from a very little amount that may be just a late fee or some interest to some larger amounts. And um, your vote when you approve licenses was to only approve the ones who were current on their taxes. So you discussed at your working meeting giving a period of 90 days for people to either enter into a payment plan or to bring their taxes current. 
The tax collector did make phone calls on Friday, and as a result of that, two have come in and paid in full, and she's had contact by two others. And I believe Nadine has had contact with another one mm -hmm. who um, hopefully intends to have it paid by the end of this year. So it's made a little bit of progress, but I wanted you to ratify your vote at this meeting tonight. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we ratify our vote to um, give businesses an additional 90 days to bring their taxes current or get into a payment plan with the collector's office. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to pull their licenses after the 90 days in the beginning of the year. I would second that. So the license, when, if it goes out to someone who owes taxes, is only going to be for 90 days. Correct. Okay. So that license will be void. At the end of March. Uh, by the end of March, if they pay their taxes, we'll issue a new one. Correct. That will be for the full year. Correct. Okay. Any more discussion? Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, another one for Rhonda. Announcement of town hall hours. <laughs> so there's two things I want to talk about tonight. One is the holiday hours. I just want to remind residents that will be closed on December 22nd and December 25th and January 1st. Those are for Christmas and New Year's holidays. The other th announcement I want to make is to remind residents that the town hall hours are going to be changing beginning January 1st. The town hall will be open to the public on Wednesdays and now closed to the public on Fridays. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9 to 4. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changing except for the day. We're going from a closed on Wednesday to closed on Friday. And you'll make appropriate signs so that everybody knows that the, the people have become so comfortable using I would do an email blast. This is going out tomorrow as an email blast, but I wanted to talk about it tonight first. Mm -hmm. right. Any other questions? Okay. Moving on to board member items. <laughs> <laughs> well, you noticed, time, Robert. You noticed I was very deliberate on that tonight. <laughs> See, not the last two times I... Uh, Got a little dyslexic or yeah, something. Just there. transpose your words. So, um, <laughs> Nadine, do you have anything tonight? I do not have anything tonight. Okay, Renee. Well, I just want to wish those who celebrate Christmas a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year uh, to everyone. And my second item is that, um, as we many of us know, Sally Bell, uh, excuse me, Sally Cook is going to be turning 100 on December 26th. And I have um, a um, accommodation that I would like to see if the board would, uh, would approve. And it reads, whereas Sally Cook will be honored by friends and relatives on the occasion of her 100th birthday on December 26, 2023. And whereas she became a resident of Sheffield many, many years ago, choosing Sheffield as her home over anywhere else in the country, and whereas she has two wonderful and devoted daughters, Lindsay and Rebecca, several grandchildren, and many, many dear friends, and whereas she was a teacher to many students during her time in local schools and a mentor and role model to many, and whereas she was one of the founders of the Sheffield Land Trust and devoted decades of her life to land preservation and protection, now, therefore, we, the Town of Sheffield Select Board, do hereby deem it an honor and pleasure to extend this certificate of recognition to Sally Cook on the occasion of her 100th birthday with sincere congratulations and best wishes for many, many happy years. In witness thereof, we do hereby sign and cause the seal of Sheffield to be affixed this, and then we can put whatever day we want, mm -hmm. uh, December. 2023, and I'm hoping somebody can make this look really pretty. <laughs> I, make, I make a motion that we accept this proclamation as presented and prepare it for Sally's birthday. I would second that. And God bless her. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I want to also let you know that uh, Nan Wells is making a, a lovely birthday card for Sally that will be over at the Senior Center. Um, soon and everyone can sign that and I will get flowers for her 
from the select board because she's having us a little celebration on the 30th. And you, you're welcome to come. Nadine is not available, but you're welcome to come. But if not, I will do my best to represent this board. Excellent. Okay. And I'll send this on to you, Jim. And I don't have anything but to wish people happy holidays, no matter which one they're celebrating over this time of the year. And uh, mention that in two days we hit the winter solstice, and then we can all be enjoying more sunlight after that. <laughs> Thank God. It takes a while. If the rain will stop. If the rain stops, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still be daylight anyway. So uh, I'm good and on administrator items. I don't have anything. Thank you. Nothing. Then do we have any public comment? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you.